Wonder Soul. Wonder Soul. Wonder Soul. Wonder Soul. He's the one, the saying of legend. Welcome to another video here at the Wonder Soul YouTube channel. This is the continuation of Wonder Soul Z. If you're not familiar with Wonder Soul, uh, if this is your first video, first time checking Wonder Soul out, thank you. I hope you stick around and check out the variety of content here. Um, but Wonder Soul Z was just a goal that I had for myself, and I attached it to uh, the podcast and everything. And I really wanted to go back and rewatch all the Dragon Ball Z films and then talk about it and see how they held up. And there's only a couple that I hadn't seen. Uh, Fusion Reborn is one that I hadn't seen and uh, actually already did an episode out. I did an episode for a handful. Bardock, The Father Goku, History of Trunks, um, just, just to name a few. Uh, just search Wonder Soul on YouTube and where you listen to podcasts and, and all the other episodes are there. Um, but I still had a handful that I wanted to revisit and uh, even one, I think it's Bojack that I don't remember seeing. I don't know. Uh, if I have seen it and I don't remember it, hopefully that's not a bad thing, but pretty sure I haven't sat down from start to finish and seen that one. Um, but here I wanted to bring this back for the YouTube channel, so we're going to continue that goal and that journey through uh, all the Dragon Ball Z films, kind of like a retrospective, I guess, um, especially with this one, where we've gotten since a Dragon Ball Super Brawly movie that was fantastic. <laughs> like animation, action, music, story, everything that you want. That's one of the visually best Dragon Ball anything that I've ever seen. And if you have never seen that film, I had the pleasure of sitting in a movie theater filled with Dragon Ball fans and it was as hype as you could possibly imagine. And me and Melzy Trap and Uncle Mike's World, uh, we actually did an episode already on that Dragon Ball Super Brawly film. And we definitely couldn't help ourselves when comparing this one, Brawly the Legendary Super Saiyan that we're going to talk about in this video. Um, and this new one because there was definitely some changes and um, so I think the last time I seen this one was around the time of the Dragon Ball Super movie coming out when was that I think that was like the end of 2018 I'm pretty sure so one of the things now after watching this again um, I just prefer the super version um, they did fix a lot of things but that's not to say that this movie and this version of the, how, this, how these events took place and Brawly as a character and who's even in this film because one of my biggest complaints about Super or Brawly movie was that none of the other Z fighters were, were really involved. Um, in this one we get Krillin, Master Roshi, uh, Gohan, Future Trunks um who else i mean just like a handful and they're actively a part of that story even though they're kind of there for comedic value probably and if oh if you're a little distracted sorry we uh, i got it going on in the background and we got the slideshow oh and oh let's go ahead and pop this up boom welcome to wonder cinema just kidding uh <laughs> but i'm gonna reference some of these uh clips as you can see brawley's whooping ass right now so anyways um yeah, so they did some changes, uh, especially in the Super movie. There was a lot of uh, changes to the origin story and how these characters are connected. One of my gripes for this particular film or version is like Brawly's beef with Goku is because he was crying back when they were on Planet Vegeta and they were like in the same room and all that. And Goku just cried so much it really annoyed the living hell out of Brawly so now he's got this thing against Kakarot. Um, speaking of Kakarot, I'm still playing that game, uh, doing YouTube live streams with that. I think we're at the, we're about to start the Android Saga so check that out. Um, great game too. If you're a Dragon Ball fan and you haven't picked it up, please 
Besides the flight control, you're good. Um, but I never liked that, so I kind of like how they tied up the Saiyans as like this new trinity. You got Prince Vegeta, you got Kakarot, and you got Brawly. And they're like the three last pure-blooded Saiyans in the uni uh, universe. I like how they involve Frieza. Um, you know, a lot of the directions and the different takes that they did with the super version of Brawly, I enjoyed. In this one, uh, obviously, Brawly is really uh, Jekyll and Hyde, kind of, right? He's very emotionless. He seems like a zombie. His dad's controlling him, obviously, and his dad does that in Super, but Super felt like he had more of a personality. Um, he wasn't so drastic as far as his, uh, as his physical appearance, I think, uh, because given Brawly in this version, the old OG version, um, he's like skinny, you know, a little lengthy. Um, in the Super version, he's still kind of, uh, you know, He's still kind of buff, uh, so I, I kind of like that. And plus, he just kind of seems like in this version, a angry, unstoppable force that's just like almost brainless until he powers up, and then you hear his dialogue more and stuff, and he kind of has more of a personality. Um, so I kind of like what they did with the super version. They made him more sympathetic, um, you know. In the end, spoilers, uh, you know he's still alive and Goku even calls him uh, his friend where in this one there's a little little thing about that where you know I think Goku's like uh, you know my real name's Kakarot but my friends call me Goku and you're not my friend I don't know some cheesy lines there's another line that I literally wrote down I was like I gotta mention this um, one of the things that I despise about this version and I hope all you Vegeta fans can back me up here is man Vegeta's a little bitch in this version of this movie like I get it and uh, Brawley's dad he does make a point he's like ah yes Prince Vegeta you would understand you know the the gravity the weight of Brawley being this legendary Super Saiyan but I'm thinking to myself like damn they're all Saiyans and not only that they're Super Saiyans Future Trunks this is supposed to take place in another timeline but if we were to pinpoint a, a, a point in the series in the anime and manga it'd be around the cell games the cell like the cell saga obviously we got future trunks uh, he's got that long hair after he gets out of the uh, hyperbolic time chamber training with vegeta um but yeah vegeta just pissed me off i just hated how they treated him like i wish that yeah it's important i guess to show how powerful and intimidating brawley is to see vegeta really lose hope and you know his pride that's that's really crazy look he's he's just getting handled i mean don't get it twisted all the characters get handled in this one um which is another thing it felt like we had more of a um a growth a steady growth of power levels especially with vegeta we got to see him take on brawly one-on-one -on -one and stand his ground if not wipe the floor with him a little bit um the fact that Vegeta is just frozen in fear, you know, he gets played in this whole thing about, hey, we got a new planet, Vegeta, uh, you know, Prince Vegeta, we want you to, you know, just that whole thing that Brawly's father tries to do. Um, and, you know, Future Trunks kind of gets sided. I don't know. He gets shifted when um, his dad's involved. And I don't know why that, why that is. Maybe because Future Trunks didn't grow up with his father, especially if your father's Vegeta. I get that. But, you know, he's just like, father. What are we doing? We need to, you know, and Vegeta's just like, shut up, man. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. And and I just don't like that. I wish, like, at that point, they have trained in the hyperbolic time chamber. You know, they're supposed to be a little bit cooler than that. Um, gosh, I got a bunch of notes right here. I'm not going to make this go super long, so let me just stay on point. Um, so, Brawly and his father, new planet. Yeah, that plan didn't care for it. You know, this whole idea, like, okay, we're going to lure... Prince Vegeta to this new planet uh, that's actually in a direct path of some comet. So it's going to blow up the planet, hopefully killing, at least for King, uh, not King Vegeta, but Brawly's dad. His plan is to kill Brawly, Prince Vegeta, everybody. And he knows about Kakarot. He knows about Goku. Um, but that plan just seems like, dude, you went too, too many, you know, 
different roads to just get to that one simple destination, you know. But I guess like in the long run, he wants to have his revenge, but he also wanted to save Earth. And he knew that Brawly being who he is probably would have destroyed Earth, <laughs> you know. And, and that's another thing. Brawly's on Earth in the super version. Um, let's see the music in this fantastic uh it is these old og dragon ball z films are filled with classic awesome heavy alternative rock that made me so hyped and and i honestly checked out lincoln park amvs and that's part of the inspiration to the amv that i did plus ultra because i mean i really enjoyed that kind of music growing up i think your music taste changes um, and the music in the super one is like this like chanting it's hype don't get me don't get me twisted I I just feel like this rock just was always kind of like setting the tone better for villains especially and somebody as intimidating as Brawly um, so the music is fantastic let's get into like the origin story so they tie more of like the Bardock father of Goku Planet Vegeta getting blown up there's more of a tie-in with Frieza I feel like that made more sense, but I think in this one it's such, it's such a personal vendetta against uh, Vegeta. And because of that, you know, I think at this point, well, Frieza's not even around at this point in the story. So I, it makes sense, but I, I just, I hated how gullible Vegeta was. <laughs> but then you have King Kai, he drags Goku into it, you know, he's like the... There's the legendary Super Saiyan and all this stuff, these power levels, check it out. Um, but like I liked how they kind of set up that origin story with them all being Saiyans, that makes sense. And um, you know, what they did for Brawly is, as far as his personality, like I've already mentioned, I feel like this version is just like pure evil, pure chaos, at least in this new version, the super one, we get a, a little bit more than him just knocking around all these characters and stuff, because he's just a brute, brute force. Um, but you know, that's about it, really, on that, Brawly's just so OP'd, he just wipes the floor with them this whole movie. And it's like Vegeta is over there like, oh, why are they fighting? He's the legendary Super Saiyan. And I'm just like, come on, Vegeta. Even Piccolo. Piccolo shows up. I don't know. He says, like, my ears, Goku. Like, I can hear everything in the universe. It's like, all right, Piccolo. You must have selective hearing because this shit been going on. But he shows up and he's even looking at Vegeta. And it's like, where's your Saiyan pride, bro? You're supposed to be this prince of all Saiyans. And now you're you're frozen in fear and uh, there's like this scene where Piccolo's lifting him up from his shirt and Vegeta's just kind of like a little like head laid back like his body is just numb and ragdollish and stuff um so you know it's I one of the cool things though was this involvement with the other um the other Z fighters but more of like that scene when you see Trunks Gohan and Goku all turn Super Saiyan. Whew, that's crazy. I mean, it basically took uh, what four Super Saiyans. Piccolo's pretty strong at that point. The only thing he Piccolo did in Super was, or in the Super movie of Brawly, is uh, what did he do? I guess he suggested that they fuse. Uh, he didn't fight or anything, and I don't think he taught them the thing. He just gave them a place for them to like retreat to. But yeah, Piccolo, they, you know, I like seeing all these other characters get involved more, even though they get their ass whooped, still. I mean, it's nice to see, because um, in the Super version, they're just canceled out. They're not there at all. Um, and Piccolo's just kind of like the MVP. He, he kind of riles them up, you know, and he gets everybody back into, you know, fighting shape and fighting mentality, because Vegeta's just collapsed over. And that's why at the end, when... When Goku's asking for everybody's energy, it really kind of it, it irritated me hearing Vegeta have that pride all of a sudden. Like, why should I give my power to a, a low-class Saiyan? I'm the prince of all Saiyans. Bro, where was that just five minutes ago, you know? I mean, he does snap out of it for a moment. And I think he just gets beat up, honestly. Um, I mean, but who doesn't? This Brawly in this is just overly powered. Now, if you've seen the super version... Yeah, he's bonkers. Uh, he's super powerful. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I can nitpick in things, and there are those obvious differences between this one and the Super one. Uh, but before I get carried away, I will say that this movie, with the action, with the animation that you do see on screen, is uh, top-notch, very impressive. And, um, you know, that's what I really have grown to like, even re-watching a lot of these older Dragon Ball Z movies. It's just like the amount of time... Um, money and effort and passion it went into the animation and, and and you know the story can be a little hit or miss uh, there's some familiar tropes in a lot of these especially when you sit down and you start watching them um, it was one thing when they were you know you're watching them as they released but you know you get to watch all these uh, movies and you see the certain story tropes that they they repeat Goku's you know saving the day all the time I get it he's the main protagonist spear bomb stuff like that lend me your energy you know it kind of all ties into the same stuff that's why I appreciated the different directions that they're trying to go in super as a series and super the Brawly movie because it was like we got Gogeta fusion freezes in there you know it just was a whole different vibe and um, you know it, it felt like yeah, it, it probably shouldn't come down to one person because I've always been confused. You know, like when everybody's giving their energy to Goku or, or whoever, why can't they fight and have that same level of energy all together? Why does it always have to be one person? Someone let me know in the comments below. I really would like to understand more of that. But look, the action, the music, and the animation in this film are great. I will never take anything away from that. Just some story things and character things that I kind of wish. Eh. There's like, look, um, Goku says something to Brawly when he's fighting him. He's like, hey, man, you can give me a handicap or something. And Brawly says, is that another word for coffin? I'm like, come on, man. I mean, Brawly's kind of like a meathead in the super version. But, uh, you know, that line was just like, oh, some of that cheesy that dialogue, you know. But, hey, it's to be expected. Um... <laughs> but uh yeah oh let's talk about um uh, brawley's father's death because that's one of the highlights uh for me from the super one is how frieza spoiler frieza kills brawley's dad and does it with such comedic value and gets brawley to power up even more because he kills him and then he's like oh look brawley your your one of your blasts killed your father you know whatever and Brawly just loses his mind in this one Brawly's dad gets killed by Brawly. He's in one of the same pods and Brawly crushes that shit and that's it You know that's and it was kind of like, you know, you hear him say like oh what a way to go and it's like oof Yeah, that's rough man um, It was a little more anticlimactic for him to just get shot blindsided by Frieza, but that hurt more you know, that was a little bit more emotional. Uh, let's see, but so, but I like the super version better. Obviously, it was just funny as hell. Um, let's see, Future Trunks. Can we just say that anything that Future Trunks is in is cool? Like, Future Trunks is just one of my favorite characters. I don't really like present Trunks. Or the Trunks from like Xenoverse and stuff like that, but Future Trunks, dude, he's, he's the guy. Um, and I just wish that Goku didn't have to be all about, hey, give me your energy, and he had to be the guy that, like, saved the day. Um, I would have preferred even Vegeta. What if Vegeta had snapped out of it? And Goku's like, it's all on you. He kind of does that. He says something to, uh, Vegeta, like, hey, you're our only hope. And it's like, right then, it's like, oh, I am? So, all right, here's my energy, bro. But, you know, what, what are you going to do? Gohan, he's always cool in his Piccolo outfit, and also turning super saiyan he's got that short hair one but he gets wiped they all get wiped around if you don't like seeing these z fighters get beat up uh, don't watch this one <laughs> it's a little bit more even i think in the super version they go toe to toe more there are some moments that brawly just hulk mania man he's just swinging everybody around he's uh literally just punching them through mountains and shit so it gets a little bit intense but yeah brawly's just he was just as train of just freaking unbelievable intense chaotic power and uh that gets pretty wild obviously goku finishes him off he blows up and there's two sequels to this movie so there's like bio brawly 
and what's the other one guys you guys let me know i forgot they're not that great they're not that good at all i kind of want to avoid them but if you guys want me to watch them and check them out let me know in the comment section below and by the way why don't you let me know what the next movie should be if you follow wonder soul on twitter and instagram i'm going to post what ones we have left and uh that way we can select and we can uh continue these dragon ball discussions week to week alongside uh my hero academia season four reactions every weekend and uh, new episodes of the podcast every friday so yeah with that i mean look this is one of the classics it wouldn't bring a character like brawley even though in this one he's just kind of like a angry super powerful guy doesn't really have a lot of dimension to him they fix that in super um but there's so many people i've heard so many people mention this like ghost plant studios who was on the podcast recently uh go check out his podcast um he was mentioning how brawley's one of those characters that's just cool he's cool looking he's this legendary super saiyan he was only briefly shown but gained this huge base fan base so um but i i like the cosmetic difference uh that they've uh done with him uh as far as super like his look in super to me is the preferred one i've heard other people disagree with that so you guys let me know which one do you prefer what version of brawley do you prefer um and i think there's both versions right in dragon ball fighters the video game right oh man it, it gets a little out there because it can just um i'm glad that this uh the super is canon this movie obviously is not canon um probably it's for the best but now they're taking that road of hey if it's a movie it's going to be canon it's going to be part of the story so i appreciate that so brawley is canon now he wasn't and um let me get you guys' thoughts on what you thought of this movie what you thought of brawley as a character what you thought of this video and let me know in the comment section below what next dragon ball z film you would like to see and uh what other villain would you like to see get brought out of these uh these movies and films and become canon that's not canon already uh maybe in the future in dragon ball super or whatever comes from that because i think we're we're still waiting on dragon ball super i don't know where it's at but um other than that i hope you guys enjoyed our brawling the legendary super saiyan discussion overall i like this movie I'm going to watch them all. There's still the nostalgia there of seeing these films. Um, I'm not really here to talk about them and review them, per se. I mean, if I don't like it, I don't like it. But for the most part, I just want to geek out about it and just talk about it with you guys. And we can continue that conversation on social media, Instagram, Twitter, uh, or even here in the comment section. You just let me know. Uh, and stay tuned for the next Wonder Soul Z, Dragon Ball Z discussion uh, next week and stay tuned to see which one that is but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you would like to support the channel subscribe and check out the uh other videos that are there on the youtube channel we have wonder sounds volume 8 that just released uh the podcast wonder talk featuring ghost planet studios uh kakarot gameplay so much more um but thank you guys for watching this video thank you for all your support i hope you guys do good and take care Wonder soul, wonder soul, wonder soul, wonder soul.